According to Rupi Kaur, how you love yourself is how you teach others to love you. Welcome to another edition of the Woman Advantage Talk. My name is May, your host and your unconventional gender balance advocate. Welcome to today's conversation. On this episode, we are going to look at how to love yourself. When you talk about loving yourself, it actually comes off sounding selfish, but it's not. It's, a, it's something that is very important. It's something that is very necessary. Why? Because you can't give what you don't have. When Jesus was asked the, what is the greatest of all commandments, he said the first one is loving God. And the second one is loving your neighbor as yourself. So in that commandment, it pre uh, uh, supposes that you already love yourself. Because like I said, you can't give what you don't have. You must have loved yourself to be able to express same to your neighbor. Love your neighbor as yourself. Meaning, the same way you love yourself, you are now mandated to begin to extend the same kind of love to others. Because a whole lot of people are going about life not liking themselves. In fact, some outrightly hating on themselves, wishing for another person's life, wishing they are somebody else, thinking they are not valuable, not placing value on who they are, not loving them, not appreciating them. And when you don't love yourself, you begin to, you enter relationships expecting too much. Expecting others to love you the way you are not able to love yourself. And it's too much to ask of another person. And the truth of that life is, you, uh, uh, the way you love yourself, by the way you love yourself, you send signals to others to love you same. By loving yourself, by placing value on you, you are educating others on how to love you, on the kind of value to place on you, so that you are not demanding too much from others. This will begin to cause strain in your relationships, whether it's relationships with your kids, with your husband or wife, or with your friends, any form of relationship, you become too needy. There is a level of love and value that is only you that can place on you, coming from the place of the understanding of the kind of love and value God has for you. And what happens when you come to this place, you begin to reflect it back on others, how you should be loved. So today we are going to look at the different ways you can love yourself or the different things you can do to begin to learn or begin to express love rather begin to learn how to express love to yourself and the number one is acknowledging your weaknesses yes acknowledging your weaknesses to love yourself you must learn not to excuse your weaknesses you must learn to recognize your weaknesses and then begin to do something about them own up to your weaknesses and begin to work towards either el eliminating them, the ones you can, or minimizing them. You begin to look out for people that help you to balance it up. You begin to seek out the information, the knowledge that you need to help you eliminate them or bring them down to the barest minimum. You begin to own it and take responsibility for those weaknesses and not excuse them. When you excuse them, you allow yourself to operate below par. When you excuse your shortcomings, you are giving yourself the excuse to operate below your capabilities. And you are also telling others that it's okay not to be excellent. When you own up to your weaknesses, you are taking the power to change your life. You are taking the power to, that you are acknowledging your power to become better. You are taking hold of your ability 
to become the best. You are taking, you are telling yourself that I can become the best. I can become better. I can become excellent. You start working towards that. You are giving yourself the power to change the situations around you, to take, to change what is not working, to become the best version of you. You, you know, you are no longer helpless. You, you, you begin to operate in a place of power where you can decide the kind of life you want and you begin to chase after that. Not allowing those weaknesses or shortcomings to pull you back. No, you take charge of that and you begin to run. You don't focus on the weaknesses. You take charge of them and you begin to work on them. That is a very tangible way to love yourself. You do that because you love you. You will do that because you want the best for you. You will do that because you place value on you. You do that because you have faith in your ability to become better, in your ability to become the best. You take charge. You own your weaknesses. You own up to it and begin to work towards eliminating or minimizing them. Number two is accepting your brilliance. So many of us, especially women, have issues with acknowledging that we are brilliant, that we are super, that we are wonderful, that we are valuable, that we bring something valuable. We, we, we are afraid. Sometimes we hide it under the cloak of humility. You have to step up and own your brilliance. You have to acknowledge your strength and begin to play to them. Because if you don't acknowledge your uh, strength, if you don't acknowledge your superpower, you can't make the utmost use of them. You can't maximize it. You can't maximize them. You must accept your brilliance. You must accept that you are special, that you are wonderful. You must accept those things that make you stand out. You must look yourself in the eyes and tell yourself that there is none like you in this area, that you are, you, you are one of a kind. You must accept that you bring authentic value to life, to the world, to whatever table that you find yourself. You must recognize those strengths and begin to play to them. Sometimes it's fear of the people around us. We tend, women most times, we tend to try to minimize ourselves so we can fit into the mold, so we can fit into the image that we have been told that we are, so we don't make people around us uncomfortable, so we don't make families uncomfortable, so we try to minimize ourselves, we try to dim our light. Don't you ever dim your light for anyone. If anyone is uncomfortable in your shine, if anyone is uncomfortable in your zone of uh, 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 um, illumination, they don't belong to you. Don't ever minimize yourself, not for any boyfriend, not for any husband, not for any friend, not for any relationship. Don't ever minimize yourself. Own your brilliance, identify your strength, and begin to play for and begin to play to them because this is what makes you different. This you are doing the world a favor by owning your strength. The world needs you to come in all your brilliance. Your children need you to appear in all your brilliance. Your husband, even though he might not know it now, needs you to come on with in all your brilliance. Your world needs you to shine and shine strong. We as women must learn to own our brilliance. This was a message I had to preach to myself for a very long time. To learn to own my brilliance. You, so that you don't tend to mold and become a chameleon that blends into your environment. You need to stand out. Because that brilliance is what makes you stand out. It's comfortable. It makes more people around you comfortable when you blend in. But stop blending in. When you blend in, you lose your light. Don't turn down on your strength. You are in your office, at your place of work, in your career. You don't want them to say, oh, she's too aggressive. Oh, she's too, she's too materialistic. And you stop pushing. 
you reduce yourself so you will be that acceptable woman so that you will be ladylike. They tell you that a lady is not supposed to be all that ambitious. A lady is not supposed to be all that vocal. <laughs> the world has changed. Don't settle for that. It no longer works. The world needs every one of us, I keep saying, both the man and the woman, to come fully in our brilliance. The humanity needs us that way. You are not doing anybody a favor by toning down on your brilliance. You are not to yourself, not to your community, not to the world. You must come in your full shine, in your business, in your family, in your, or in your career, in the office. You might be that light that somebody else needs for their own candle to catch fire. You, somebody else might need that your brilliance to be ignited. And you are withholding that from them. You are denying that, them of that brilliance that you carry. Take acknowledgement of your brilliance and shine. Take and shine and shine. That is another way you can love yourself. And number three is like a combination of the first two. It says, recognize your limitations, but accept your sparkle. As a human being, as a woman, you must look at yourself and be very objective about your strength and your weaknesses. So, because if you don't take cognizance of these, you will limit yourself. You might be a fish that is trying to fly. Fishes don't fly. Neither do birds swim. But they all have their sparkles. A fish is limited by not having wings to fly. And it's okay. He does not need to fly. A bird will drown in the water. It's okay. So when you recognize your limitation as a woman, as a human being, you begin to know where your sparkle is needed. You begin to know the things that ignites your sparkle, the spaces, the areas that ignites your sparkle. Understand what you can and cannot do. It's okay. You're a human being. You can't be good at everything. You can't be. We are not made like that. That is why we have different varieties of people. People with different strengths and weaknesses. So we can all balance one another up. So, but it's your job to recognize what these, your limitations are and what your sparkles are. I have seen so many people who can't sing to save their lives, but they just want to sing. They just want to sing. They waste so many years of their lives trying to break out singing. But that is not their sparkle. They don't have the voice. They may not have the courage. They may not have the personality. There are other ways you can shine. And it's in you. In each and every one of us has been deposited our unique sparkles. It's for us to discover it. Every single person comes with a bunch of sparkles. Every single woman. There is that thing that makes you tick. There is that thing that stands you out. I don't care who you are. I don't care when you were born. I don't care where you live. There is something about you that is special. That sets you as part from every other human being on the earth. You must discover it and own it. Stop trying to be a fish and wasting your time struggling to fly. You will fail and you will fail woefully. Does that mean you are not special? No. It's just that you have not recognized nor accepted your area of sparkle. Accept who you are, discover what your limitations are, and let them go. And then focus on your sparkle, on your areas of sparkle. It could be writing, it could be being a mother. You, I have seen, I have seen amazing mothers. I have seen people, women that made this parenting so glamorous, so so interesting, so impactful. That is their sparkle. You might not be, you might not have gifts in churning out menus, but you can be so uh, uh, wonderful, so great at making your home look very livable. Focus on that and then 
look for who will balance out those limitations. Get help. Get assistance where you need it. But don't play to your weakness. Don't play to your limitations. Play to your strength. Play to your sparkle. That is where you will shine. When you are operating in your place of sparkle, you make it so easy. People see it and they wonder, how are you achieving this without effort? You make it look effortless because that is your area of sparkle. Now, I'm not talking about your comfort zone. No. Your area of sparkle might be that area that will tax you, that will draw you so that it can bring out the best in you. That I'm not talking about finding a comfort zone and relaxing there. No. For instance, my, my comfort zone and also my area of sparkle, kind of, is creating content. I can shun out content ideas like this. It's, it's so easy for me. And I, I, I like doing it behind the scene. Really. I want to, I, I'm more comfortable doing it behind the scene. But I've realized again that being in front of the camera allows me to sparkle more. But it, don't ever think it's comfortable for me. It's one of the hardest things I have done in my life, being in front of the camera. I, I would rather be at the back and direct from the back. Is, that is my comfort zone. But I'm realizing now that my area of sparkle is where I can connect with you. Now, when I push myself, when I force myself to be play there, every day is getting easier for me. Every day is getting, I'm getting more comfortable. And I'm also realizing that I'm getting more results, achieving more by operating in that space. So you have to find a way of knowing what your comfort zone is and your area of sparkle so you can easily differentiate them don't mistake your comfort zone as your sparkle no don't choose the part of le uh, least resistance it usually doesn't lead you to greatness so number three is all about understanding what your limitations are and accepting them for as okay and also recognizing, identifying, and appreciating your areas of sparkle. I just love that. I, I love saying that. Because I, I, when I say it, I just see stars. I see brilliance.